You both said today that you love each other and I believe it, but I'm trying to tell you love is not enough for a successful marriage. There's so many other things that go in it. It's not just about you anymore. Here is today's case. Sharea and Adrian met six years ago when Sharea's car broke down outside of a laundromat. Together, they had one daughter in 2016, and three years later, were about to have baby girl number two when life got complicated. Now, they're trying to build a business together while their marriage suffers from financial disagreements and lingering resentment. Today, they find themselves in divorce court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Poulton Callahan versus Poulton Callahan. Thank you, Juan. Shadea Poulton Callahan. Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant Adrian Poulton Callahan, who is your husband. Yes, Your Honor. You say that you are ready to end this marriage if he won't stop being disrespectful. Yes. And the two of you have been together six years, married for three years. Yes, correct. Your Honor. Yes. Okay. How did you end up in divorce court today? Um, my husband, Adrian, if he doesn't get it together as far as the disrespect, the procrastination, and his cheapness, then I need to just move along. What do you mean by that? He's very disrespectful. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mm -hmm. And when speaking with me, he'll speak at me and not to me. Like, we're equal. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, don't cut me off all the time. If I'm giving you my ideas, don't cut me off. Mm -hmm. Don't raise your voice at me. Don't call me out my name. Oh. So he's calling you out of your name? Yes, he has. Okay, what do you have to oh, say, sir? I don't know about that. What do you mean you don't know? You um, do, or do or don't call her out of her name? No, no, Your Honor, I don't call her out of her name. You don't seem very convincing right now. Uh, well, I wouldn't consider it to be disrespect. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't, I don't use my best tone when okay. talking to her, but I don't think that's a big problem. Okay. Uh, what is the biggest problem you say you're facing in this marriage? The biggest problem, Your Honor, is the disrespect. Um, from How? The, see, give me an example. We went to go um, meet with the realtor, right? So we're talking business, and in the middle of my conversation with the realtor, he just cuts me off. And not only was that not professional, that was embarrassing, and it was rude. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't give me a chance to respond or to share my emotions or my feelings or my thoughts. It's just he'll answer for me because so, he doesn't like my body language or my facial expressions mm -hmm. or whatever. So you want him to communicate better yes. with you yes. and, and particularly in front of other people. How did the two of you meet? We met um, years back outside the laundromat. My car had broken down mm -hmm. and um, he was working at a nearby barbershop mm -hmm. and he came to help me. So we've just been inseparable since then. And what'd you think about him when you met him? He wasn't my type. Um, he was everything that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be a challenge because that's just the woman I am. I like a challenge. Okay. And um, he had I confidence. I wasn't he, the, you, the type of... Well, this, is, this is her was, opinion. This is her opinion. This is her what? version. I want to hear her version. Uh, he wasn't okay. my norm in dating. Okay. So with well, that... Why? Um, he was, uh, he's light-skinned. I prefer <laughs> darker-skinned <laughs> darker men. Okay. Um, his job, um, he was, he had a shop inside the barbershop. Okay. I wasn't used to that financial stance that he was in. Okay. Yeah. So he wasn't making enough money? No, well, and girl, that you led... you broke down at the laundry <laughs> but, but your car was the one that broke down. <laughs> my car broke down because my starter went out. What kind of car was she driving? It was like a 1996 scooter bug is what I refer to it as because when you start it up, it started up like... <laughs> and rolled down the street. Okay, so you're saying she wasn't exactly living in the lap of luxury. Was, exactly. So what changed you your... Tow truck. What, what changed your perspective? <laughs> because you said he wasn't your type at all and normally... He's not someone you would be attracted to. So his, how did all of that change? His charisma. Now, I'm not saying he's not attractive. I find him very attractive. It's just, um, it was just different for me. His potential, he's funny. He's very outgoing, self-motivated. He's a hard worker, mm -hmm. family-oriented. Like, he was the bomb.com. However, we moved in early, mm -hmm. like six months in. And mm -hmm. that's when the problem started? Yes, Your Honor. Because then you're living together, you're spending a lot more time together, and mm -hmm. you can see more. Yes. And what exactly did you see? 
example, we went, we pulled up to the convenience store. It was time to pay the rent, you know, every first of the month. This was the first time, was this when you yes, started living together? Yes, brand was the new apartment. with rent? Did you would split the rent? Yes, Your but, Honor. But you said, you already said he wasn't making a, a lot of money. Well, that's what, uh, I perceive that because of what he put on. Like, what do you that mean, he, he had on? more money than what he did. Okay, so he wasn't truthful about his finances. I yes. was faking it. Yeah. Well, at, at some point when you move in together, you know you gotta pay bills. You, you weren't thinking very far ahead, were you? Well, I had, like, when we first met, I had my own shop mm -hmm. in the barber shop. But she convinced me that I need to get a, a real job. So... <laughs> I got the real job making eight dollars an hour, and then she just t kept taking all my money for bills. Well, when you say a real job, what were you doing at the barber shop? That's not a real job. Well, I I, I was working for myself, so okay. it was like uh, you self-employed. Yeah, that's a real job. Yeah, she would, but for her, she wanted to know exactly what was coming in. She wanted a W two wage earner. Yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah, instead of you being an entrepreneur, exactly, and trying to build yourself up to something. Why didn't you let him be great? He he's always been great. I so you wanted him that... to have a minimum wage so you could know what the W two earnings would no, be. No, I needed to know. Um, I have a military background, so I, I'm a very structured individual. Mm -hmm. I need to know A, B, C, D, and maybe an E. So with that being said, I need to know what's coming in, when, and how frequently. But that's you. That's not who you married. That's, yes, that's, I see that. I see your point. I see it. But at the end of the day, don't portray to me that you have more money because And your he honor. Has... And your honor. I'm sorry. But then after she took all my money, after my $8 an hour, she kicked me out <laughs> after I was short on the rent. I had to get an emergency C-section. Mm -hmm. And he went ahead and signed the papers for me to get my tubes tied. I just made the best decision at the moment. He's not a medical professional. You are looking for someone to blame. He is not the person. So you kick him out, but at some point you allow him to come back into the home. Why? Just couldn't stay away. Was one of these one red flags from the very beginning? Yes, they were. Yes, but and you that, just couldn't stay away. Why? That challenged his potential. Mm. We just had really good chemistry. Mm -hmm. We would joke. We'll stay up all yeah, hours. But chemistry of the night. doesn't pay the bills, and that appears you know to be your biggest concern. Yep, yeah, you, that's right. That's right. So when he came back with that chemistry, who paid the rent? I did. Okay. Mm hmm. What happened with the, uh, you said there were issues with one of his exes. Yes. Um, we ran into each other out in public mm -hmm. and um, she confronted me and threw a spaghetti jar at my car and dented my car. Were you with her when this happened? No. Okay, so she was mad because yes, you moved she... on? Yes. And hit her car with a jar of spaghetti. Sauce. Sorry. That is so what, stupid. What did you do? But I was pissed. Um, I called her and cussed her out, but she hung up on me and blocked me, so. So she just mad at the whole situation? Basically. Yes. What else happened? You said you went through a traumatic experience. Mm hmm What happened? In the birth of our second child together, um, I had to get an emergency C-section, mm -hmm. and um, if I would have pushed, I would have broken her spine mm. and her neck. Beautiful children. Um, so everything worked out. Thanks. We had spoken about um, possibly, you know, getting my tubes tied, mm -hmm. but we always kept, like, you know, to try our birth control mm -hmm. because we wanted um, a son. Mm -hmm. So at that time, you know, I was sedated and he went ahead and signed the papers for me to get my tubes tied. So it was just like, dang, I Without know... your consent? It's like I agreed to it, but I was sedated, mm -hmm. like, how everything came about, I just wish we would have just waited. Um, so what just... happened at the hospital? What made you sign off on that procedure while, while she was in the hospital? So she had to go into emergency surgery. Mm -hmm. It was a whole bunch of doctors around and nurses around. It was just chaos. Mm -hmm. And the nurse had came to me and told, asked me that I want her tools to be tied and she thought it would be best. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I just made the best decision at the moment. Under those circumstances? Under the circumstances. Because it was presented to you as this was the best decision for her health and well-being at the time. Right. So, can you understand how 
your husband being in that position, he's not a doctor, he's not a medical professional, he's in the hospital, it's a high-stress situation. Mm -hmm. Can you understand why he thought he was doing what was best for you? Yes, yes. So why have you held that against him? I just wanted us to, you know, just have a larger family. We had talking about it before. I didn't... But that's you know, what happened. Yeah, is I you know. cannot blame him for that. You are looking for someone to blame. He is not the person. Got it. He's not a medical professional. He was given information and made what he thought was an informed decision at that time. I just want this to not... For all the reasons that you've stated why this marriage is not working and why you're having problems mm -hmm. and the reasons why and the things you do blame him for, this just shouldn't be one of them. We're working out of our apartment. I love his help. I appreciate it. But here we go with that tone. You don't even listen. It's easy to treat people well and be nice to them when you like them. What really talks and speaks to who you are is how you treat people when you don't like them. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. The two of you have started a business, a company selling candles. What's going on with that? So since the pandemics, you know, started, um, everyone's in the house. Mm -hmm. I wanted to invest in myself. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, with the nail tech. I invested in school to take classes. And then I started with candles mm -hmm. and that got promoted and it just took off mm -hmm. to my online store. So now we're, we're working out of our apartment. Mm -hmm. It's like we had to put our stuff in storage because every, it's just taking over. Okay. <laughs> the whole living. I mean, in the middle of a pandemic, that's a good problem it's, to have. Yes, right? it's a blessing, yeah. But what, why has it caused problems between the two of you? Because it's like, he's a supervisor at his job. Mm -hmm. When he comes home, I love his help, I appreciate it. But here we go with that tone. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's a family business. He helps out. He's great. You don't even listen. I... I'll tell you what you need to do. Because he cuts me off. <laughs> you see? He cuts me off. So, if, just like just now, mm -hmm. speaking to but you... But if I tell you to do something and how it's supposed to be done, you need to do it how I ask you but, to do but it. But, sir, sir, you understand that at work you're a supervisor, which is great. You've worked your way up, right? But at home you're a team. Everybody, Find a way to work everyone, with your teammate. Listen, everyone trusts me in what I do except for her. She's the only person that doesn't give me the lenience to say, this is how this needs to be done, and I trust that you'll do it right. Okay, but whose business is it? She started it, and you're working on it because you, the two of you are trying to build it together. So does her opinion matter as well? It does in the creation, I, mm -hmm. but with productivity... You, you are the person who knows and has this experience is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. What do you say to that? I'm building a legacy for our children. Mm -hmm. So it matters with the creativity, the customer service, every, down the line, how to run a business. Mm -hmm. And I would appreciate if you had any ideas to bring it to me, not in front of other employees, not trying to over-talk me, cut me off, shoot down my ideas. Well, he, he well certainly not in a demeaning tone. I, I believe that's what you're saying. It does matter. But I think, the, I, I think that I understand where she's coming from in terms of not just what's being said, because I, I, I think she is, you know, if you really do have something to offer in the way of constructive criticism and advice and some true leadership in how to handle the business, I think she's open to it. I don't think she's, she doesn't come across as unreasonable when it comes to listening and learning and doing things better to succeed for your family. She just I, does not come across as unreasonable. However, the real issue is how things are being communicated. It's easy to treat people well and be nice to them when you like them. What really talks and speaks to who you are is how you treat people when you don't like them. Because there are peaks and valleys in relationships and you will go through times where somebody's getting on your nerves. Mm -hmm. Or you don't like how they're handling this situation. It's how you treat them at that moment that really speaks to what kind of person you are and the kind of discipline and control and temperament you have and what you're bringing to the marriage. The two of you are a beautiful couple. You have a beautiful children. You are a beautiful family. But you got to work on your communication. 
you know, you talked about how you met him in the beginning. Now he's a supervisor at his job. So all of this charisma and everything you say you like about him. Mm -hmm. But we come into the relationship as we are. And it's not our job to shape people into the people we think they ought to be. We can encourage them. We can uplift them. We can certainly motivate them. But if you want to just change a person and say, you need to change in order for me to love you, that's a mistake. Is there anything else? She spends too much money. (laughs) On what? Everything. She had packages come to my house for 39 straight days. I counted. Mm -hmm. Are you doing that? That has happened, Your Honor. (laughs) 39 days. That's a lot of packages. I didn't even know he was counting. Like I said... And they're not cheap. I have, Your Honor, I presented some evidence to the court today. Mm -hmm. This is one purchase. One. It's over $500 for one day. Let's see the evidence. This is, so you are spending hundreds of dollars on clothes, but where are you going? Everybody's That's one day. at home right That's now. That's for one day. That's not for multiple days. And whatever she doesn't wear, she just throws in a box in the back of the corner. Do you think you have a spending habit, an unhealthy spending habit? No, because I, I pay myself first. I put to my savings first. Mm-hmm. She so, does. And then also, you know... <laughs> <laughs> she does pay herself <laughs> first. <a> <laughs> so. He wants to buy the cheapest of everything all the time. He buys the cheapest she, vacuum, listen, the cheapest... Listen, dinner. Your Honor. See, this is the difference between us. She grew up on a golf course. I grew up where we might not eat dinner. Mm. So I don't see fit to overspend... You have different perspectives on how you spend money. Yeah, I would rather save it. Mm-hmm. I, I can see that. But either way... And also, an issue is his procrastination, Your oh, Honor. Oh, Lord, here Judge, goes. Open we, up the fish tank. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> um, we started looking for a home. We're tired of renting. We want to be homeowners, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so back in January, the beginning of the year, uh, we went, you know, seeking a home. They pulled our credit. We had some debt. Mm-hmm. Okay, paid mine off, squared away. Here we are, months later, our lease is ending soon. Where are you at? And I've offered to give him the money for these items on his credit. Mm-hmm. So How much it's is like it? it's two items. It's no more than eleven $1, hundred dollars. Okay, so why so, haven't you paid that so the two of you can since move? Since I spent so much house? money and you said Well t- to be honest, like I don't want to pay those people. But it's your debt, be, right? But to be honest, yes it is my debt. And that's the reason why it's not paid because she she did offer to pay my mm-hmm. debt for me. But I feel like as a man, I created the debt so I should work for and pay the debt. Right, myself. but you just said you don't want to. But I did. Actually, I just paid the first half Yesterday. of it. Yesterday. Okay. <laughs> before I came to court, so you ain't fried me. But I'm going to pay the other half. But As when? soon as possible. ASAP. Okay, so that's going to be my judgment in this case, Mr. Callahan. I'm ordering you to take care of this debt in the next 24 hours so the two of you can move forward, if you so wish, in looking and purchasing homes. That's my judgment in this case. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Uh, I think she gave an awesome advice today. Um, Some pointers that she gave me about moving forward after the birth of our daughter, um, that was, that gave me a different perspective. So I was happy to hear that. I just want you to pay within the 24 hours so we can move on together, looking at homes for our business and just moving forward and just communicate respectfully. I've been procrastinating for a while, so I should have been paid it. Um, but I'm going to pay it when I get out of here and just move forward with my wife. With your tooth being tied, I just hope you know that I'm going to be here for you no matter what and that we'll get through this together. <laughs>